Hi everybody, this is Chris, and today I'm going to teach you how to manage data within Unity. We are going to try and keep this into about 15 minute tutorial segments, but we'll see how far we get. We'll see if we want to push it out past that once we begin. I have opened a brand new project in Unity. This is what you should see or something similar to this. I know I've moved my screen around a little bit over the years to kind of come up with my own comfort because you can move things around to really show. I like to hide services. It likes to advertise those and it'll pop over my inspector. So I've and flow. This is your main scene development window. Over here we'll have data for objects within it. Like if I click on this, you'll see come up over here. Camera, gives you a little camera preview. But anyway, you should be saying something like this if you're going to follow along. Just open up a brand new project, start fresh. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into it. And we are going to right click in our assets and we are going to create C sharp script. Call it item. To edit this, just double click on it. Yours, if you do not have this tied to Visual Studio, will open in Mono Develop. That's perfectly fine. You're going to, for the purposes of this tutorial of data management, you're going to be able to use either one of them the same way. There's, there's no real functionality differences we're going to touch on here. Um, I'm going to do my own little anal retentive behavior here and put my brackets where I like them. This is sort of programmer holy war. There's no right or wrong, just people who like things a certain way and will get very, very adamant about it. So someone somewhere will get upset that I just did that with the brackets. But this is how I like to code, and I'm going to put it this way. And there's one of the things about coding. Uh, there is some science to it. There's also some art to it. And you need to be comfortable with your art and how it looks and how it feels. And even though I'm going to show you my way of doing these things, if you get to the end and you get something done and it's working, uh, be proud of that. Not anybody can even finish one of these things. So find your own way a lot, but I'm going to show you my way of managing data within Unity. So we've created this C Sharp script. And even though all we did is create a brand new script, you'll notice there's stuff already in it. Uh, right up here at the top, you're going to see three usings. And what this is telling the script is we want to allow you to use commands from system collections, system collections generic, and the Unity engine. Without these in here, I couldn't do if one equals two. Like that, that wouldn't work without having these things in here to tell it what commands we're allowing ourselves to use. You are able to add other things using Unity script, Unity editor, Unity engine.ui. We'll probably use that at some point in time, but we're not going to use it today. It just allows us to have other things. Um, the next thing we see down here is it's public class item. This is similar. This will name it whatever you named the file initially. And it's telling it that it's a type class and that it's public so other people can see it. We will cover public and private here in a little bit. Mono behavior is saying that the item is inheriting functions from the mono behavior. So somewhere else there's a script that looks very similar to this of public class mono behavior. And that lets us do things like have this void start, void update. There's a couple other things like void awake. And then, oops, what are you doing here? Let's see. Void fixed update. Now, fixed update's one we're probably going to use at some point in time if this tutorial series keeps on going. But for right now, there is no need to worry about it. We will cover the differences and we will cover everything else when we get to them. I just want to point out they're there so that in the back of your head, you know they exist. We don't need to, you don't worry yourself with them for the purposes of this project. 
Now, we need to create some data for our item. It's nice that we have an item, but we need to worry about things like, does this item have, helps if I spell string correctly, uh, name of item. And let's give it some hit points so that this item can wear down. We may want to add other things later, but I wanted to just get these first two things in here. Now we've created this name of item and we've created this hit points, but they're sort of just empty buckets right now. So we're going to create name of item torch and we're going to create hit points equals, let's say 10 to start. That works for me. Hit points equals 10, name of item equals torch. And now we're going to kind of try and call those from somewhere else. So we come down here and update. Maybe we want to make uh, the hit points go down every turn. So we do hit point. Oh, they're not here. And this is because when you declare something sort of between two brackets, the easiest way to think about it is when you declare something within brackets by saying string name of item, it exists only within those brackets and anything under those brackets. So if I was to put a if uh, one equals two, create some brackets, although it's not going to like that because equals is double equals. Then I can do name of item equals burnt torch. And if I do an int rounds remaining, three, and I come down here and type rounds, see rounds remaining doesn't exist down here, but from within here, remaining does equals two. So the larger set of brackets will always be where all this is held. We can even go down and show you uh, yeah, down here, hit points doesn't exist down here. I think we were just talking about that. So what you need to do if you want something like name of item or hit point or something tied to the entire item itself is you need to declare these out here in the class. So string name of item torch. Oops, need to put it in parentheses if it's quotes, if it's a crotch. Let's see if we can spell correctly yet. All right, getting closer int hit points we actually let's take this out completely doot, doot. okay now you'll notice that this says this is a local variable so we're going to do we're going to do this club we're going to show you the first, I'm going to show you a command here you're going to use a lot in this thing. Debug.log, name of item. And what debug.log does is out here in Okay, what debug.log does is out here in the console, kind of jump back for a second, lost my mic, just a second, oop, debug.log, out here in the console, there is a console. This is something I'm going to clear up later. When you send a string into debug.log, it will put a message here in the console of whatever you put between these parentheses. So we're going to come down here to and do debug.log. We're also going to do item down here. I want to show you something. So oh, this is going to this is going to be there's going to be a couple lessons here. So we're going to hit play and nothing's going to happen. Why is nothing happening? Well, even though you've got this script and you've got it 
All this is here. It's not throwing any errors. Nothing seems to be going wrong. Void start, void update, all of those only exist if a prod, if the object is running in the scene. So we need to create, let's create a cube and we'll call it our item. Call it our item avatar, just for some differentiation. I'd probably call it item if I was creating a game, but I want to do something else here. Mesh. All right. Now you can come down here and you can go to scripts and you can see that item is a script and you can add it that way. But as you get to sort of a bigger game and, and add more and more and more and more and more scripts, it's going to be hard to find it. So if you start typing, you'll notice that it'll let you do that. So now we've got this item script in here. It exists. And so now when we hit play, go to the console. Still nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? Well, this is embarrassing. Let's go back to our script. Save. Let's save. Come out here. The script is here. Item avatar is here. It's on the item avatar. Oh, I see why. Okay. I didn't have these turned on. So you see that there's torch and there's club. So even though torch exists, it calls it torch. The name of item, it's created a new name of item. It's overwritten this one and it's keeping it only within these brackets while this name of item is still existing in all the other brackets. So be careful when you're declaring stuff the same name. You kind of don't want to do that. And it's one of the reasons I recommend when you're making variables and declaring variables, declare them all at the top of your class right away, even if you're not going to use them for a little bit into the class or structure or whatever, just so that you see where they all are. Now, if I was only going to use something like in start, then I might, let's do this now. Let's save this, go back in here. Let's stop this, clear everything. Uh, let's click collapse. So there's some functions here you can do within your debug.log. I should probably go over those. Collapse, you're going to see this come up and it's going to say torch and torch. And notice how it's just adding up a number where if I don't take collapse, it will give me a new line for every time it does that. Uh, error on pause or pause on error. Connected plays. We don't really have any of that going right now. You can clear it and it'll just create new stuff. You can hide messages, you can hide warnings, you can hide errors. We don't have any errors or warnings right now, which is great. But let's stop this. Let's clear this. We don't need this anymore for right now. Go back into our script. So this is why it's important to, if you're going to create something that needs to be used in all your functions within, and this is what this part's called the function, it's going to be used within all these pieces. Your start, your update, maybe some other things. You want to declare it in the level of the class. Now, and you'll notice that even though I declared it as club up here, let's go back in one more time. I declared it as club. It only says torch because the start redefines what that means up there and it changes it. Where if I were to do string here, it would create a second variable name of item and would not call the rest of it torch. So we've done that, we've done that. Let's now go in and do this. We're going to create, actually, let's just do this. I'm going to click on this and hit Control D to duplicate it. You'll notice now there is a second item avatar on the screen called item avatar parentheses one. And there is two things. So if we hit play here, we're going to watch it go up twice as fast. There's two torches. It's counting both. Uh, let's spread these apart so they look a little better to the camera. Yep, now we can see two. Perfect. Um, what we want to do here is I want to go back into script. And I want to be able to manipulate this from within here. 
I want to be able to make changes to these values without going into code. So what I'm going to do is, these are essentially written as private. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them public. And I'm going to make a public for the entity. This means that things outside of here can see and interact and manipulate with this. Still a little bit of a trick to it. We'll cover some more of that later, but if I come back in here and we'll click on this item avatar, you will now see that there's club and hit points equals zero. Club and hit points equals zero. I want to get rid of this for right now because we no longer need this here. Back in here, we can make our assignments here at this level. And let's give this one 10 hit points. And let's give this one five hit points. And let's call this one Torch. Save, oops, need to really do that just yet. I'm gonna hit play, I'm gonna clear this out so there's no messages down here. And I'm gonna hit play. And you're gonna see that it says Torch and Club and Torch and Club. And even though these are both using the same script, exactly the same script, we only have one script in our project, they are treating it as their own sets of variables. And they are showing you different sets of variables down here. Okay, I'm gonna put a break in here because we've just passed 15 minutes. And when I come back, we will start talking about passing data not only around within an object, but between objects. And I think that's gonna be pretty interesting to work with. All right, thanks everybody.